Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Janice, if you're new here. So this video is gonna be an update to the amazing liver and gallbladder flush videos that I've made over the years. I've made a few of them so far. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, the book I'm speaking about is uh, by Andreas Moritz. It's called The Amazing Liver and Gallbladder Flush. I'll put a picture of it up here on the screen somewhere. So I would suggest you watch my first video, which I'll link below. Um, it's gonna explain what I'm talking about if you're a little bit confused. So this is basically just an update because a lot of people that follow me were curious. So recently on June 18th, I performed my seventh gallbladder flush. So the idea behind them is that you're supposed to keep doing them until no stones come out for two times in a row. So I believe the first two gallbladder flushes I did, lots of stones came out. Um, in my initial video, I talk about that. The third one, not so much. And the fourth, basically nothing really came out. So at that time, um, I think maybe only one or two little specks of something came out. I thought, okay, you know what? I think I've done enough. I'm eating really healthy. So I decided to wait a year to do my next one. So I waited a whole year and nothing really came out again so i was really excited i'm like wow like my eating cleans really paid off i must have you know really done a good job with the first ones so i waited another year so my sixth one still nothing came out i think maybe like one tiny little stone came out nothing at all so just due to covid this last time the seventh time it ended up being a year and a half so just how I thought of it is, um, you know, I'm going to do them once per year as maintenance going forward. So because it had been a year and a half, I didn't really know what to expect. At Christmas time, I got sick, so I was planning to do it then. I, I couldn't. And then just due to COVID, the place where I go for colonics has been closed. It's really important to do colonics before and after, so I wasn't able to do them. So... As soon as the place opened back up, I decided, no, I'm going to do it because I'm still um, not working at the moment. So it's a perfect time if you can do it when you just have a little bit of downtime. Keep in mind, too, I feel like every year that goes by, I try to eat a bit healthier, a bit cleaner. I try to use less toxic products around the house, all things like that, right? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> I was pretty surprised. This one was very successful. So I'm just going for a clinic right now. So I just walked to the place. It takes like an hour to walk here. It was so hot. Um, yeah, so this is the day of the cleanse. It's around noon right now. So I'm just going into the office right now. So this is what the room looks like. So you basically sit there with the blanket over you. And there's a little nozzle there. So basically when you're sitting on this, you can look in that little mirror off to the side and you see what's flowing out of you. It's shocking what comes out of your body. And they have this little sign off to the side saying what you're seeing, what does that indicate? So over a hundred more stones came out. I wanted to add that because a hundred more stones came out, I'm going to continue to do these every couple months. So this is just a good reminder, even though you think you might be done, you probably should keep going with it on a regular basis. I went back in my head and I was kind of thinking like, what are some things that I might have done differently in the past? So I'm going to tell you a few tips that I think that uh, helped me make this one very successful. So this time I went for a colonic just due to me not working during COVID. I kind of had my schedule wide open, which was ideal. So number one, I went for a colonic the morning of when I performed the liver flesh. So in the past, I always would have to go the day before just due to my work schedule. So going the morning of, that really helped, I think, just so really nothing is in you. So when those stones come out, they can really release. Um, number two, the type of apple juice you use is really important in my opinion. So I'm going to put a picture up here. So I find the darker apple juice really works well. Um, you know when you buy apple cider vinegar and it has that cloudy mixture in it, the mother? 
I find when juices have that, it works better. I believe the lighter color one, it must be filtered because when you look at the ingredient list, these two juices have the exact same ingredients, but obviously they look much different. The darker one tastes a lot better too. It's just more flavorful. So I really like that Tropicana one. You can get it pretty much anywhere. Another brand I like is from Whole Foods and it's just their own brand, the 365 brand. Um, it comes in a big glass jar. It's just a little bit heavy to carry home. It's a really, really big jar that it comes in, but that one is also good. And I'm sure there's lots of other brands that you can get that are darker in color. So that's my second suggestion. Also in the book, it says, do not perform the flush on a full moon because during that time, our body really retains a lot of water. Um, our tissues retain water. We're more, sorry, we're less likely to release toxins. So if you're performing any sort of detox, flush, anything like that, it's best to avoid it during that time. And my mom could vouch for that. Like it's not really a myth that people go a little bit crazy during times of a full moon. Like she, my mom used to be a nurse and she would tell me incidences from when she worked in the psych ward and what would happen when there'd be full moons, like the types of people that were coming into the hospital. And yeah, she has some crazy stories. So there is truth to that. Um, I think in the past actually, I did notice maybe my fourth or fifth one, I did perform it on a full moon. It was just by accident. I, I didn't even really look at the calendar and I was kind of like, oh, it's not gonna make a big deal, but maybe it did. So if you can perform, perform it, I believe it says in the book, um, between um, a new moon and the full moon phase, I'm gonna put it up here on the screen just to make sure I'm correct in what I'm saying that is ideal so definitely um, just all my suggestions are follow the book to a T um, also too it's very 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 important to go for the colonics before and after people write me all the time asking me about this another tip in his book he says to use the pink grapefruit so a lot of the times I would get the ones that are red on the inside so try to find the pink ones. I think it just has something to do with the different um, acid levels in that type of fruit. Also on the morning of the cleanse, you should set out your grapefruit if they've been in the fridge. They have to be room temperature when you use them. So in his book, he says pink grapefruit work the best. I have used red as well, but I think I looked up pink has a different um, acid level then the red so if you can get pink that's ideal also in his book he has different variations like if you can't use grapefruit juice then you can use i think orange and lemon juice mixed together but i've always done it kind of the og way so in my experience it takes about two very large grapefruit to get the amount of juice that you need i always buy four just in case because you don't want to be mixing this late at night and then realize you don't have enough juice so just always buy a little bit extra but usually two really large ones are okay so probably if you bought three you're gonna be fine here's the olive oil i'm using so it's an organic one extra virgin olive oil and it's supposed to be cold pressed and then this is pink grapefruit he says this is best Okay, so I'm just gonna juice the grapefruit now. And then um, when it's time, when it's 10 p.m., you're going to add the grapefruit juice to this and shake it 20 times. And then you drink it right by your bed and lay down immediately. And then I always strain it just to get the pulp and seeds out. And we're doing six ounces. So that worked out perfect. Um, just two of the grapefruits gave me like a little more than six ounces. So just for reference, you need about two pretty large grapefruits, but always buy an extra one just in case, obviously. I felt this one was going to be very successful because when I laid down in bed after I, I had drank the olive oil and grapefruit mixture, when I laid down, I could feel so many bubbles around my liver. It almost feels like, it will describe it in the book as like little tiny marbles floating out and I could feel a lot of activity. Even the day before I performed the liver flush, I could feel a little bit of 
activity going on there, which is, it's kind of crazy. It doesn't hurt or anything. It's just, I don't know. It's pretty amazing. You have to experience this yourself. But um, also before you do the flush, even just from drinking apple juice throughout the days, it can kind of release some stagnant bile and stuff around your liver. So yeah, I just had a feeling this one was going to be successful. Yeah, so I started going to the washroom the next morning at like maybe 6.30 a.m. And right away, I wrote it down in my phone here, I'll tell you. Um, the first time when I went to the washroom, about 50 like moderate to large ones came out, which I was just like, I was in shock. When you see this for the first time, you will just be in shock. And I've said this in other videos, this is gross. But so what's coming out of your body, it's not food, it's not like you're, it's not like you're having a normal bowel movement. What is coming out of your body it smells like toxic chemicals. I will say though, over the course of the flushes, it gets less and less toxic. So the first couple times I did this down there, it actually almost gives yourself like a chemical burn because the stuff coming out is so, so toxic. It's just, it's unbelievable what we have in our bodies. It's crazy to me. So next up, I'll show you what I eat um, on the day of the actual cleanse. So there's the plain oatmeal. So obviously, yeah, it's not gonna be the most delicious thing in the world, but you're just eating it just so you don't get hungry. So for lunch on the day of the cleanse, you're allowed to have white basmati rice with steamed vegetables and a little sea salt. So this is just um, the brand that I always get. So I'm just gonna make a small serving of that and then I will eat that before 1.30 p.m. You cannot eat later than that. And then I'll perform the cleanse tonight. So I'm gonna go for a clonic um, around noon, and then as soon as I'm done, I'll eat this. So I'll, I'll bring this with me. So I have my little meal prepared for lunch. So I have to bring this with me. I'm eating kind of on the run today. So in the bottom, I just put one third basmati rice, one third a cup, sorry, I should say, and then I put one cup of the steamed veggies. I kind of over steam them a little bit just so they're even easier to digest. And then it says you can sprinkle some sea salt on. So I just put this one. Um, there's not an exact measurement of how much you should eat for lunch. So I today I can just tell I'm not very hungry today. So this will be fine. And I feel like if you can eat less, it's probably better um, just so you're not, you know, kind of overtaxing your body. So yeah, pretty simple. So you eat your oatmeal for breakfast and then this for lunch no later than 1.30 p.m. So I'm just sitting down. I'm just eating my veggies on the side of the street here because I have to go do some other stuff. Now I'm gonna show you um, just some examples of food that I eat on the day after you perform the flush. You're supposed to just start off the day by um, drinking fresh pressed juice, fresh fruit, and then just eat very light for, I would say, like the next few days to a week. And primarily, I, I try to always eat a plant-based diet. Um, if you do still eat meat or dairy, I would just maybe hold off. If you can eat like a plant-based diet for the next week, I think that's very conducive to healing. You have to remember, you kind of perform like a mini surgery on yourself. So just be very careful. And even if you're hungry, try not to overeat anything like that. I find the next day after I do the flush, I'm always very, very hungry. So just try to control yourself and just eat very light and healthy. So I'm just making some fresh juice. So this is the morning of the cleanse. At 10 a.m., you can start drinking fresh juice. So I'm just gonna put a few things in here. I hope this is okay. Maybe I shouldn't be combining this much stuff, to be honest, but I just put a little kale, banana, mango, and some strawberries and then I'm also gonna drink um, a smaller green juice first so I'll make that as well and then at 11 a.m. you can start eating a couple pieces of fresh fruit at noon if you feel like it you can have like a small lunch so I'm gonna make a little bit of a green juice so I have a little kale I'm gonna put an apple gonna add a little splash of apple juice and 
gonna just use up this lime that I have. And I'm gonna add some celery and some cucumber and ginger. So I just added a piece of fresh ginger. So now I just added a bunch of celery and probably like one third of a cucumber. I took most of the skin off. Sometimes it's easier to digest. Then we'll just blend it all up and I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. I find juice like this, I blend on high for about one minute and then it's nice and smooth. So start it here. I love my Vitamix. I probably say that every video. But it's definitely worth the money. Sometimes with stuff like this, you need the tamper, that little black rod to just push it towards the blade. Here are my fresh juices. So I'm going to drink the green one first and then I'll have this one. That's the, the mango banana one. Um, I find in the morning when you're finally allowed to drink the juice around 10 a.m., it's the best feeling because I'm, I just feel very hungry very thirsty. You're just craving something nutritious. So I'm really excited to drink these right now. So right now it's 11 a.m. So in the book it says I'm allowed to have a couple pieces of fresh fruit. So I just cut up a nectarine, a kiwi, and I have a few blueberries there. In another hour I can eat um, a meal. for lunch today. So I always have this soup in the freezer. It's a carrot ginger soup. It's a kind of like a variation of Lynn Genet's, um recipe in her book, The Plan. But I usually always have this soup in the freezer, just if I, I need it for like a lunch. And then I put a bunch of fresh dill. I just, I love dill. And then this is some of that leftover rice and veggies. I just uh, reheated it. So anything that's really warm is going to be beneficial for the liver. And then I'm just going to add some of this. It's like a sea salt with kelp and dulce. Or dulce. I don't know how to pronounce that actually. I always say dulce, but I don't know if that's right. Um, so it's just good for your thyroid. So I'm going to put a decent amount of that just because, you know, you've been going to the washroom a lot. You kind of need some salt to kind of balance out your electrolytes now that I'm able to drink water again. So this is obviously easy to digest as well as that. So for the Epsom salts, I'll show you the brand that I use. So sometimes these can be very hard to find. I made the mistake um, the first time that I did this flush, I just assumed you could get these at any drugstore because I never looked for them before. So it was like a couple days before the flush, I could not find these anywhere. I went to every pharmacy. People were looking at me like I'm crazy. They never even heard of it. Some of the pharmacists said, pharmacists, sorry, said that they could order them in, but it would be like a week or so. I finally found them at a compounding pharmacist. I will leave the name of it down in the down bar if you happen to live in Toronto. Um, one time she had them in stock the first time, thank goodness. And then the second time I had to get her to order them. They're very affordable. They're only around, I think, $10 and they last quite a while. But just make sure it says ingestible and it's um, it'll probably say that it's a laxative on it. They're more common, I think, in Europe, so you might not have a hard time. But yeah, if you can't find them at a regular pharmacy here in Canada, try a compounding pharmacist. Maybe even a health food store if you guys have any little tips where you buy them. I've looked online before. Often they're sold out. You can't find them. Um, so just make sure that you have all the materials before you do the flush. Make sure you have your colonic appointments booked for before and after. And just follow everything to a T. A lot of times people write me questions and I'm like, it can be answered in the book. You just, it's one of those books I've probably read 10 times now. And every time I read, I, I learn new information. There's a lot of really good information in that book. So some of the benefits that I saw right away um, after I did it initially, I noticed the whites of my eyes got a lot whiter my whole life my eyes have just always kind of been bloodshot or have like almost like a yellowy tinge. I don't know, my dad's eyes are like that too. He's not really that healthy. 
But yeah, people would always ask me my whole life, like, have you been smoking weed? My eyes are just always bloodshot. And so after the first cleanse, I noticed almost immediately the whites of my eyes got a lot brighter. And I never said anything to anyone. I just thought maybe it's a coincidence. But even my boyfriend at the time, he mentioned it to me. He had noticed it. Even now, um, I don't know if it's just the lighting, I because I haven't filmed a video in a while. When I look at my eyes, for some reason, my eyes do look a little bit different today. Um, so I don't know it's just interesting um, through his books I've really learned I never really knew about iridology how you can study people's eyes and tell like what disease they might have in their body but it's really interesting if you look into that um, even like pulling your eyes down and sometimes you know like you see people you can get those like little white stones there that could indicate like a um, kind of like a clogged congested liver it's just it's very interesting if you delve into all that um, also too, but I think probably it was due to the colonics, um, my, my, sorry, my digestion really improved. Recently, like I was so proud of him after nagging him for like four years, my boyfriend finally went for a couple of colonics and he was just shocked what you see come out of yourself. Like even if you're not having any problems, um, yeah. And so especially for men, I think men are often maybe a little bit put off by stuff like that. It's Besides heart disease, I want to say colon cancer is pretty high up there um, for the type of cancer that kills. And when you see what comes out of your body, even if you eat clean, like you will just be in shock. Everyone should be going for colonics, not obsessively, but you know maybe a few times a year or whatnot. Uh, especially if you eat a lot of animal products, it's just it's crazy what we have in our bodies you guys when they do autopsies of people it is not uncommon they can find between like 20 to 50 pounds of waste in people in overweight people um, even in smaller people that are not overweight like sometimes when you see someone that's skinny fat like they're, they look very skinny but then they take their shirt off and their stomach's kind of protruding it's often due to a clogged colon so yeah it's just something you really need to look into again I've made videos about that in and I just wanted to tell you guys, I made a private Facebook group. There's just a few of us so far in it. But if you're interested in doing the liver flush, you have any questions, if you've already done them, it's just kind of like a support group that we can post videos, um, share pictures if you want, ask questions. I do suggest you to read the book first, although you can join the group if you haven't, if you're very serious about it. I just, I'm only suggesting that just because I feel like the book can answer a lot of questions. Um, but yeah, feel free to join that if you want. I'll leave it up here on the page and I'll link it down below. So next up, I'll show you when I'm drinking the Epsom salt and water mixtures. These are the most disgusting things ever to me. I usually just measure it all out before in the four little bottles. Okay, so it's 6 p.m. So I have to add four tablespoons of the Epsom salts into the water and there's 24 ounces of water in here. So then you're gonna shake it up and this is gonna make four separate drinks. And I'm gonna take one of them now. This is the most disgusting thing you will ever drink your whole life. If you're getting the Epsom salts, make sure that you get the ingestible ones, not um, ones that you just take a bath with. And it usually says laxative on it. They're sometimes hard to find. I have to get this at a compounding pharmacist. That's the brand. I can never find them online. I have to go in person. Um, you can sometimes ask a pharmacist to order them in. I believe this company is, yeah, it, this is, I think, Canadian. I've looked it up before. Yeah, so anyway, okay, so I'm going to add the four tablespoons in here right now. So my little measuring spoon doesn't fit in the jar, so I'm just pouring it in here first. They'll funnel it back in. So um, we'll just do a close-up here, and then you can kind of see what the Epsom salts look like. Actually, in a big clump. But, okay, so I need. Yeah, I'm gonna need a lot more than this. Here's one. You know what? I'm gonna just shake this up because. There we go. So we're gonna put 
three more. And then after you just put the lid on the glass jar, shake it up, and then you're gonna divide it into four servings. So each serving is six ounces. So usually what I do, I just pour it into here and then we'll get to six ounces right here. And then I'll just pour it back into a, a cup, something easier to drink out of. Don't try drinking it out of this if, if you're gonna do the same. You, it is so disgusting. So just drink it out of something that you can quickly drink it. I find like a shorter cup actually works better than a tall one. just pour it back in here just so it's easier to drink so in here I just prepared the rest of the mixtures so then I'll just dump it into the glass when I need it I find it works best when you do it like that in the first two I find they go down a little easier so I just put a little bit more liquid and then <laughs> by the time I get to the very last one it's not so bad going down but if you guys have done this, you know, it tastes so disgusting. So I'm just drinking the first mixture right now. Disgusting. I find the first two are not that bad to get down, but the ones that you have to drink tomorrow on an empty stomach, it's so disgusting. And I think because when this sits for a while, it becomes like more potent. So in the book, it says in Germany, I believe that these are called bitter salts. And that's exactly what it tastes like. It tastes like the most bitter, salty thing ever. It's so, so gross to me. So tonight I'm gonna take another one of those um, drinks at 8 p.m. And then uh, just a little bit before 10 o'clock is when you drink the olive oil and grapefruit mixture. And then you're gonna lay down in bed immediately after. So just make sure you're showered, everything's set up in your bed. And um, oh, I'll show you. And then when I lay down tonight, I like to heat this magic bag up and you can put it over your liver. It also says in the book, you can make a castor oil pack. I have tried that before, but I didn't really notice a big difference. I just find this easy. And then just to relax too, I love this like heated eye mask. It moisturizes your eyes and it's really relaxing. So I put that on as well. So at 10 PM, I have to drink the mixture. It actually tastes really good. It tastes like a refreshing salad dressing. And then you have to lay down in bed immediately for 20 minutes. You can't move, you can't talk, nothing. You just have to kind of like put energy towards your liver. So tomorrow you need to drink fresh pressed juice, fresh pieces of fruit. I personally like to have some soups ready. So I always make this like carrot, ginger, sweet potato, um, like a puree soup and I freeze it. So I always have it on hand, so I'll take that out. Um, so just things that are really easy for you to digest tomorrow. And then for the apple juice, um, so you're supposed to drink one liter of apple juice for six days leading up to the night that you do the cleanse. And so I just divide that one liter into four little mini servings because um, sometimes my stomach doesn't feel too good if I drink too much at one time. So you're just ideally, you're supposed to sip on it slowly throughout the day. Um, Personally, I did just divide it into four servings because I don't want to expose my teeth to so much acid throughout the day. Um, that's just my personal preference. 
and always drink through a straw, rinse with a little plain water after, and wait 30 minutes to brush your teeth just so your saliva can re-harden, remineralize your teeth. You can also swish with some baking soda that can kind of neutralize the acid. Just make a little mixture of like baking soda and water. I would suggest that you write out or type out exactly what you need to do the week and the day of the cleanse. So it's pretty easy, the prep. I mean, you're just drinking a liter of apple juice for six days, um, but the day of the cleanse is very specific and you have to do things at certain times. It's very important. Um, and the next morning after the cleanse. So I would suggest that you type that out so you don't make any mistakes. I also just switched, because I think in his book he puts everything in ounces, so I just put it into cups just so I don't make a mistake when I'm measuring anything. And you need to follow this exactly, and you must go for a clonic before and after the cleanse. That's very important. I have people message me all the time. Yes, you guys, you have to follow the book exactly. You are performing a mini surgery on yourself. Do not do this if you don't have access to what you need or you don't have enough money to do it because these are not the cheapest things to do, I will admit, especially when you first start doing it. So if you don't have any of those, then don't do this. This is not for you. And I don't mean to be rude, but <laughs> sometimes people message me and saying they're not feeling well. I'm like, okay, well, you never followed the instructions. So just follow the rules and everything will be good. So you have to drink one liter of apple juice for six days leading up to the cleanse. So you're supposed to sip on the apple juice slowly throughout the day. So usually what I do, I will divide the apple juice, the one liter of apple juice into four parts. I find that easier. Sometimes when you have to drink half a liter of this at one time, it can kind of make me feel sick. It's just very sugary. So I just find it best um, when I do that. And obviously always drink through a straw to protect your teeth, rinse your uh, mouth with water right after. Like anything acidic, always drink apple juice through a straw to protect your teeth. I try to drink off to the side a little bit in my mouth just so it's not hitting my front teeth where the enamel is thinner. And always wait 30 minutes before brushing your teeth if you have to. And always rinse your mouth out with a little plain water after anything acidic like this. So a lot of times things that are great for our body are not good for our teeth. So just being a hygienist, I'm always concerned with my teeth. So like I said, always use a straw. So I put some baking soda in here. I'm just um, whisking it. I put warm water. So I'm gonna rinse my teeth with this because I just drank that apple juice and oh, I'm so glad to be done with it. I found this time really hard. Like I feel like the first couple times I did the cleanse, I actually liked apple juice because I usually only ever drink water. So it was kind of fun to drink something different, but ugh, I just feel I'm so sick of it. This will just help neutralize the acid. Still wait half an hour before you brush your teeth. So every third liver flush, you're supposed to do a kidney cleanse. And especially if you've had like kidney stones, problems with your kidneys, um, definitely always consult your doctor. I have done this kidney cleanse before. I don't know if anyone else has done this. They can comment. I don't know how effective it was some of the herbs so in andreas's book he does suggest a bunch of herbs that you can make a tea that supports kidney health i found especially just due to what's going on in the world right now um the one store that i would normally go to had been closed so the health food store i found some of those ingredients that were already in teas and then i would just steep my own so i put like three different tea bags in this thing steep it for like 15 minutes so it's really dark so if you're doing the liver flush, it's very important. It says in the book, um, if you've ever had any kidney issues, kidney stones, before you perform the liver flush, you must do things that help kind of detox the kidneys. So the kidneys filter your blood. So the reason why some people don't really like the liver flush, if you ask you know, some practitioners, they feel that it kind of just burdens your body with a lot of these toxins as you're 
getting them out of the liver, which is true. So you wanna do things that are very gentle and healing for the kidneys. Otherwise you could get sick. And especially if you've had any sort of kidney trouble your whole life, you need to do that. So in his book, he has a list of herbs that you can make um, some special teas with the month before you're planning to do a liver cleanse. I find some of the ingredients a little hard to find. And I feel like, you know, I grew up in a small town. I feel like they would be impossible to find there. So what I do, sometimes I just buy some of these teas. They have a lot of the ingredients that he mentions. And then I kind of make my own tea and sip on it. So it's really important to do a kidney cleanse every few liver flushes. And again, it says this in the book, this is nothing new. Um, but yeah, that's the brand that I like. I can't find them all. And just during COVID, it's kind of a little hard to find ingredients. Some of the health food stores are still sold out of things. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put a tea bag in the cup. You're not supposed to drink this type of tea on the day that you do the flush. So I've been drinking this maybe a couple times per day in the week leading up to the flush. I probably should have started this a bit before. Um, I've also used the Renew Life, the kidney, it's like a kidney flush kit. Um, I'm not sure how much that did. I, I did that a long time ago. Yeah, so that's just a little tip if you can't find the herbs. And actually, um, like one of the things is fennel and marshmallow root and I forget the other name. But anyway, in because um, my boyfriend's Indian and his mom always gives us fennel or they call it sanf in Punjabi. But yeah, they give it to people um, for those things as well. So basically, I find a lot of like what his mom and dad would get them to eat these herbs and things like that teas. It's like through my research, it's all like Ayurvedic medicine. I wanted to wait a little while after I did that just to make sure I was feeling okay. Um, I've never ever felt sick. I've always just followed it perfectly to a T. I've always had a good experience. You will feel probably kind of tired for the next few days. So just take it easy if possible. Um, it was kind of good to do it now because the gym wasn't open. You don't want to go back to working out. Just, you know, go for walks or do light yoga. Nothing that's too taxing on your body. And yeah, stay tuned. I have something else, another cleanse that I will be doing maybe in a couple months. I want to give my body time to repair and relax. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you're interested, join that private Facebook group and then we can chat there if you don't want to post your questions here. But always, I mean, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. You can leave any questions or comments in the um, down bar here as well. Bye.